Hello, welcome everyone on Women Dialogues and I'm your host Shashi with you all to create more voice for women and by women. And today's our guest, Salma, she's from UK and she's living in Yorkshire. She's a qualified and trained dance and drama teacher, leader, researcher, trainer, choreographer, fitness instructor and published author. She runs her own academy, dance academy in Yorkshire, uh, UK. She has lots of achievements. She works with a lot of students. So she must be having a lot of experiences, a lot of uh, learning, a lot of motivation for all of us. So let's welcome uh, today's speaker, Salma, on Women Dialogues. So welcome, Salma, on Women Dialogues. Thank you very much, Dr. Shashi, and thank you for having me today. Uh, thank you, Selma, for joining us and uh, taking out your busy schedule and movement for being, becoming part of this mission, becoming part of this journey to inspire and to motivate uh, people and especially women globally. So let's start knowing about you and about your journey. And by starting, I, I would believe we can connect always from our childhood to the present, which makes us more way unique, what way as we are. So please share about your early childhood journey, how it was, what kind of movements, uh, what kind of challenges you had, how you uh, overcome, how you see all those movements at, at present in your life. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, um, I had a very happy childhood. Um, and had good relationships um, uh, with my parents as well as my siblings. And we were a very close family. Um, I'm the artistic and the creative one from the family. Yeah. I you. always knew that from a very early age, Dr. Shashi. Even when I was about six years old, I always used to have a dance and a prance mm -hmm. around the house. And then when I was at high school, Mind you, even at primary school, um, I remember the musical Grease with John Travolta and Olivia mm -hmm. Newton-John was out then. And um, I used to follow all the moves and I, I always had a big interest in dance movements and gestures. Mm -hmm. And then at high school, I took a qualification in contemporary dance. Mm -hmm. um, so contemporary dance, I love contemporary dance. It's it's in my blood. And I studied that for about three years. I right. passed that and I got a grade A. Wow. So I was I know I was very enthused with that. And I thought, oh, maybe I can do something, you know, with dance uh, and make a career out of it. So then I actually went on to college. I did uh, performing arts. So I did lots of contemporary dance, jazz, street dance. Uh, mm -hmm. I tried to bring some ethnic South Asian dance within um, the, the, the uh, you know, when I was doing some choreography as well. Um, so I did a lot of drama, uh, lot, lots of devising, directing, script writing. So that was really, really interesting. And I really enjoyed that. It was just what I wanted. Um, so then I went to university and I did uh, dance drama with education wow. mm -hmm. and I absolutely loved that. But the thing is, in, in the 1980s and then in the 1995s, to be honest, the, people knew about Bollywood, South Asian dancers and other dance genres, but not right. like how they know Bollywood now. Bollywood is now very popular. Whereas in them days, it wasn't. And even when I used to dance, my dance teacher used to say, Selma, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm doing Bollywood dancing. And she goes, well, what is that? And then I used to explain to her. So I feel that I was kind of one of the few people who kind of introduced Bollywood dancing to the local community here in Yorkshire, where I live. And mm -hmm. uh, then I did my teacher training. Um, so I did, uh, again, that was in dance drama, but I did special educational needs as mm -hmm. well. So when I'm working, no matter who I'm working with, Dr. Shashi, I want to make my sessions, whether it's dance, whether it's poetry, writing, physical movements, I want them to be accessible to everybody and anybody. And that's why I, I really want to do special educational needs education as well. So that's kind of like my early childhood. Um, I used to dance a lot in my bedroom. I had like, I'm not even joking, I had like a little space that big. And mm -hmm. I used to dance just in that space 
all the time. And I used to make uh, my friends just, when they used to come over, I used to say, can you sit down? Because I've got this move to show you. And that's all mm. I used to do was dance, dance. Mass English science did not appeal to me at <laughs> all. I mean, I did, I, I did make it, I did pass yeah. and stuff, but, but it yeah. didn't, I found them so boring. Um, I just wanted to run with gestures, movements, and uh, yeah, and, and I'm still doing that till date. I think uh, it's as you mentioned, and it's, uh, especially when you mentioned like what was your calling and how you developed your passion, how you developed your pers uh, you know, pers uh, pursuing not only for uh, physically able, but you made it accessible for all kind of that's beauty of your work, I believe, mm, because as you mentioned that uh, you you made it very affirmative action that it should be accessible for all. So when we are talking about it, your experience, you must be having a lot of children, a lot of age groups um, and all genders. And when we are dealing uh, all these things, how how you find how how your work goes around a part of like definitely it's art, it's all about movement. But uh, whereas when you are talking about uh, making everyone feel special with their own way, with their own capabilities, and uh, where you are making those movements special for all kind of students, how you make this? Yeah, that's a really good question, Dr. Shashi. Thank you for that. Um, so what I tend, how I tend to deliver my sessions and develop those is that I'm quite um, student orientated, um, student centered. So I sort of, I take their needs into consideration. So during mm -hmm. session one, let's say, I might, you know, throw a couple of tasks at them and just to see how they're interacting and engaging within, the, within those movements. And then I kind of make my assessment from there and then I might sort of come to the conclusion thinking, uh, OK, so that was a bit challenging movement. Uh, this is me just making my assessment to myself for student A, but student B managed that. So how can I then differentiate the movements so they mm -hmm. become accessible? But then how do I also, as, a, as an educator, ensure that the person that's slightly ahead of student A can be extended? So then I would offer extended activities, extended movements, maybe some movements that are slightly complex to what I may offer to student A. But then I also give them their own opportunity where they can create, um, where they can get creative. So a, a simple task like, right, you've got eight beats. I would like to see two movements to start off with. So then the student will give me two movements. Obviously there will be varied, different variations and that's fine. Then once I know they've got that and they've grasped that task, then I might say, now, can you make that movement into a smooth, jagged, interacted, can you make it smooth, sharp, can you do it on the floor, can you turn around, can you do it static, robotic, and now can you add another two movements, but then student A and student B will be doing their own versions, what student A can do and what they are comfortable with, what student B can do, what they've done with their extended activity, that's how I work. And, 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 and I've always been very, very um, people-centred, student-centred, even like when I used to deliver Bollywood Tiny Talks, Bollywood Kids, it was always about the kids, that, like the little kids, three-year-old, you know, moving about and they were so adorable and, you know, and obviously they couldn't do something like one, two, three, four, da, da. so I had to think how can I reduce that speed? But right. honestly, said this so adorable and they used to do it. But I also used to have a marking assessment sheet as well to ensure that they were moving. So they weren't just there. They weren't just coming for a Bollywood session, which is fine if that's what you want. But because I was I am a trained teacher, so I would look, observe, assess, adapt, change to meet right. their needs. I think that's beautiful the way you shared how you assess them, how you give them their special movement and same time how you give them their own pace to develop their own creativity and their movement uh, while working with various age groups, various, uh, you know, segment of uh, uh, children versus like all even adults. 
so when we are talking about it shows your uh, your own style your own leadership quality so what is your most uh, strong you know, point about your leadership quality oh <laughs> um you know something i would say that you can give me a chaotic group mm -hmm. um that may have some challenging behaviors and within 45 minutes to an hour i can turn them around and i think that's to do with my personality um it's like so when i go into the session say if i've got 30 children you know they're not listening you know this is just an example i have actually been in this situation however in one of the schools here um wow. but they're not listening but <laughs> the way i get them um to focus on what they are doing on the way I bring them in towards me. And by the end of the session, they will say, Miss, Miss, when are you coming back? And, I've, and I really do feel that's how I lead the session. You know, I'm, I'm uh, precise, I'm concise. You know, I'm, uh, you see, it depends. I don't like to be strict because I don't think that's my job, but my job is to ensure that I deliver good quality art and the children, the participants have progressed and they've shown me that development. And as, as long as I've got that, I'm happy. But I also think that my personality helps a lot to bring out my leadership qualities, which then the children sense and see and feel and hear, and they gel to me then. Uh, I mean, the, the students through the Dance Academy, as soon as those doors open, they'd go, Miss, uh, they say, oh, hello, we miss you, where have you been? And Because I think with children, I can be a child, uh, even though I'm totally professional. Uh, with the adults, I can be, you know, uh, deliver at that quality. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think maybe one of my leadership quality is adapting like a chameleon to each uh, mm -hmm. group. Uh, on different ages and levels and abilities. Uh, that's beauty. And I think that's uh, one of the, your unique ways as you mentioned, that's your unique leadership quality to uh, be adaptable. Uh, when we are talking about it, art, uh, to be creative, to, uh, you know, uh, get our, you know, uh, passion in something more than our work, uh, we all have some kind of interest. And in current time, when we are having this global pandemic, uh, I think people need more than ever. How, what, what way you are experiencing in your students, or maybe what way you can guide um, the, our audience? They can develop that kind of creativity, that uh, kind of uh, all these arts. Yeah, and yeah. Okay. So obviously, as we know, the global pandemic, um, you know, lots of uh, business have been affected, not just right. in the United States kingdom but worldwide yeah. so obviously for us artists or when uh, anybody who has one-to-one -one interaction which is the majority of us artists or no artists um that has proven to be challenging um and, and obviously as you will probably know that lots of people are now doing digital stuff they're, they're connecting more digital and here we are today talking to you all the way in Doha I mean I think it's fantastic you know and I think we are kind of thinking out of the box now as well thinking yes well you know I can communicate with someone in India or Pakistan or America or Australia you know it doesn't have to be that then because we're not in the same country you know we can't connect with that person we really honestly can now mm -hmm. and I think we're just being more mindful of that now as well which is great I mean, for me, in terms of my dance classes, uh, I have been offering um, some sessions online as well. Um, and there's a project. In fact, we're doing a project and we've got, um, we're working with the World's First Partition Museum in Amritsar in the Punjab in India. So again, we're doing lots of stuff online. And, um, you know, I've done some workshops um, with some of the groups um, mm -hmm. out of Yorkshire, um, you know, some which are a few hours away, which normally I would have had to go and travel to, um, but now we can do it online. But this just means for me, when I'm doing my planning, instead mm -hmm. of doing it, as if I'm doing a face-to-face -face session, I've got to think about how I'm going to do that in a digital form. So the sessions mm -hmm. are still available, but they're just online currently until it's safe for us to go out mm -hmm. and meet up and, and yeah. deliver. 
I, I think that's that's a very uh, beautiful tip which you are sharing. Like uh, we can continue the same way, being uh, our, uh, mindful, being creative, uh, but just the form has been changed. Uh, whether in person and now it is online, but you can experience the same way. And I believe audience can also learn the same way if they are looking for some creative uh, way to develop their, you know, themselves or their uh, further their ability or their passion. Because and now, as uh, I believe in parent scenario, we have even more time to develop those passion which or maybe those interests which we never got time because of mm. communicating because of going one place to another place it used to take a lot of time yeah. uh, so uh, so selma when we are talking all about it you you run your own uh, selma bollywood dance academy and where you, i believe you have experienced intercultural a uh, lot of dance a lot of movement uh, how you find the kids' uh, adaptability or kids' interest in general, or it is something like how uh, it is some diversity and inclusiveness. We all are talking uh, all the time, being an adult, but when you are working with young, you know, kids, what way you find? Is it one of the source? Do you mean how how do I interact with the children? Uh, yeah. Yeah, here I'm trying to bring uh, like uh, when we are you are dealing with a lot of children, all all different cultural. But when they are coming and you are saying, OK, we would like to learn Bollywood dance, whereas just it is maybe uh, at the moment it is just art when they are uh, entering in your academy. But whereas as an adult, we always try to teach or learn or uh, to talk about diversity, inclusiveness. Right. Yeah. And yeah. as a young car, young kid when it is entering initially the child purpose is to learn the dance but whereas you're bringing all the other things in child learning so how it seems like okay uh oh, oh gosh that's a really nice um question as well um okay so yeah i think um okay so when the little ones come to me obviously we don't have no conversations about inclusivity diversity inclusion nothing like that we just right. literally right. treat it as an art session the kids right. want to learn a, a extracurricular activity and yes. that is volleyball dancing but yeah that's yeah. um we bring a lot of education into that so for example it'll be the instructions will be like instead of saying we are being very inclusive we're doing this and we're doing that the instructions will change to um, we're standing in a parallel position, to is in, shoulders down, can you smile, chin up, and we bring the dance terminology, not just for Bollywood, but your generic one as well. Um, mm -hmm. So we do, you know, like second position, first position, plie, and things like that. Okay, so, and that's fine, you know, it's uh, an hour, the kids have lots of fun, they dress up, they have a performance, you know, they're geared up for it. They look lovely, parents come, they watch, and there's an outcome, and that's brilliant. So when we're teaching the the um, um, older um, participants, be it a mixed session, be it uh, with both males and females, or be it a lady session with um, Indian ladies, Pakistani ladies, um, Arabic ladies, um, uh, white um, British ladies, Chinese, it doesn't matter they come to the session and the session is extremely inclusive and mm -hmm. we just treat it as any other session it just means we've got a a mix a, a good mix of of community which is really really nice to see and um and we could possibly sometimes have conversations around inclusion diversity and fitting in uh, and learning something that you might not generally learn because um, I love Bollywood dancing, I love any dance in South Asian dance, but it's not everyone's cup of tea, but yet then to see um, not just Pakistanis, but, um, you know, Chinese people, German people come to yeah. your session. Right. It's brilliant. Right. Yeah. So to me, that's a massive tick box because, you know, we've attracted um, people from all sorts of groups and communities. So that's my yeah. inclusivity. Mm. 
that's beautiful and that's what i i i was feeling like when we are talking about it, it's just not art it's bringing a lot of cultural diversity inclusiveness uh, by giving them just art lesson but at the same time they develop that understanding having students from diverse culture and then they are together and learning something which is Absolutely. a particular kind of genre of dance or or maybe art it is it is definitely beyond that uh, so when we are talking about it you are yourself a researcher and uh, author as well and um, as i'm aware you have uh, worked and you have published lots of your book and work would you like to share about those as well Oh, thank you, Dr. Shashi. I would absolutely be honoured. Thank you so much. So, um, so yeah, I um, I've done a lot of research into. So before I share my books, um, obviously I wanted to uh, write books as well, but um, children's books to start off with, and mm -hmm. so I had to do a lot of research into that one book in particular, which I will explain in a bit. But this is my first book. It's called Bollywood Princess. Absolutely love that. The illustration. Wow are super amazing, done yeah, by a wonderful great. lady called Sahara Jami. Um, honestly, just absolutely lovely. Um, just pick some more pictures of people. So if you can see on there, mm -hmm. we've got the dance and movements in there as well. So classical mm -hmm. hands, Indian hands. So when the boys and girls read this, not only do they come to the dance academy, but they take this book, they practice when they go home by following the book. Um, mm -hmm. So this is my second one. It's called Help. I can't dance without my bangara pants. <laughs> so it's about a little boy. <laughs> it's about a little boy with um, autism, mm -hmm. which is a, a learning disability. So um, the, the character in here, a man, he keeps slipping and tripping. And there he is taking part in his dance class, but he's just slipped and tripped and gone on the floor. And his teachers are like, oh, what's going on here? Um, but although nobody knows that he's got autism, oops, <laughs> nobody knows that he's got autism till unless they read the blurb. But it's all about his magical Bangra dance pants and there he is wearing them. And this is a great book because it really, um, I think when sometimes when you have a, a, a family member or a child with a disability or a, learn, a, a learning um a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. Some South Asian communities not necessarily want to talk about that and mm -hmm. and I just felt in the kind of work that I was doing working in education and I just wanted to write a book about a South Asian boy that's yeah. got a disability so that when South Asian communities and families read this it's about mm -hmm. living your dream, it's about not giving up and it's about thinking it's not the end of the world if yeah. you've got a family member that's got a disability own it own it wear that badge and that's what i wanted to do with that that's then beautiful I, that's beautiful oh thank you thank you so much dr sushi and then i wanted to write about somebody who's in a wheelchair so i've got greedy gertie here she's wonderful uh, so she uses a wheelchair, but she also loves to eat waffles. She loves waffles. And then, you know, she comes across lots of different animals. She's got snakes, she's got frogs, she's got crocodiles, and they're all dancing. All my books are about dancing. And then what happens is that everybody turns to Greedy Gertie and they say, can you show us some moves? And she's like, well, um, you know, I'm sitting in a wheelchair, I can't dance. And then, so what she does is, because she loves to eat waffles, that's what she does day in and day out. She stacks her waffles up really nice and high because she's feeling sorry for herself because she thinks she ha you need legs to dance. So she starts eating the waffles from the bottom. So as she's working her way up, they come falling down and there they are. And what she does, the clever lady, she grabs on snatches, you know, she reaches, she twists and she turns all in her wheelchair. She catches them all, she eats them all. And everyone's like, hooray. And she's like, well, I didn't do anything. And they're like, no, you know, you were dancing. 
you don't need legs to dance you can do it in your wheelchair and that i, I have, honestly i absolutely love this book um it's just great especially when i'm working in uh, specialist schools um and you know or, or, or um participants that uh, may be using a wheelchair it's great i love that one um that really inclusive book um and then i wrote sally and a super snot <laughs> So uh, this is about a little girl um, who has a little problem with her snot and there she is. And then um, all these historical characters come out just because of her snot. So we've got cavemen, we've got loads of things in there. This is fantastic. I, I, I can feel that your work is incredible. You have done lots of work, publication, lots of beautiful books, especially how we can inspire and motivate their parents those are having maybe special need and how we can give them that sense that they are themselves unique and they can develop their own way what they are dreaming for Absolutely. so that is really incredible work which you are doing um uh, selma you you are sharing a lot of things uh, you must be having a lot of inspiring stories as well while working with uh, a lot of students and with a lot of places and apart uh, along with your academy would you like to bring any inspiring and motivating story where you change someone's life? I or think, um, yes, I think there's two. One is um, when I was reading Greedy Gertie and there was, I was in a school and there was a little boy and I said to him, look, and his one-to-one -one said, um, Salma, he's um, blind, so he can't have a look at your book. I felt absolutely devastated. I came home and I thought, how can I make that difference? So what I did was I created, created an audio CD of Greedy Gertie and I created the book in Braille. So then I sent him an audio CD and a Braille copy. So he doesn't need to look, he can hear me and he can read me in this way. So that was a proud moment. The other proud moment was how I've inspired not just other children but my own daughter amber zaman mm -hmm. now amber has actually wrote her first poetry book during the lockdown which started on march the 23rd for us last year so she's worked with a lovely illustrator called um ursula hearse and she's come out with wonderful poetry as well as lots of images um Wow. Uh, working alongside Ursula. So that's the one where she thanked the NHS for their contribution mm -hmm. and what they've done. And then I'll just show you this last picture that she's done with Ursula Hurst working together. Now we were talking about how things have changed about digital media and oh, there is Amber explaining yeah. how it's things are beautiful. Changed. It makes my heart full of love about her. It's such an incredible work, such a beautiful work she's doing uh, in such a young age. That's that's super amazing and same time it is uh, not only about her but she is same time giving same hope to many other young uh, kids like similar of her age. So yeah. Selma, when we are talking about it, it seems like you are creating change, you are making movements for people life. So uh, when we are talking all about it, what way you see your future plans of uh, for your work and all? Oh, yes. Um, right. So, yes, I mean, I'm still um, teaching. I'm just waiting for the lockdown, to, although the restrictions are easing well, once it's properly safe to do so, to restart with what I absolutely love to do teach dance uh, and to do more writing i'm writing some more children's books but i'm also writing my first novel as well so that's kind of really exciting yes i'll have to send you a copy dr shishi you'll have to read it definitely <laughs> wonderful yeah surely so yeah, so, yeah i think um, maybe um, amber might want to do some more writing then i can mentor into that we're trying to encourage more children to write as well because like amber always says you don't have to be an adult to write and i think that's a key message there and you know we promote that you don't have to be an adult to write any age you can write you can become a writer uh, i'd like to work a bit more on poetry i've recently started to do a bit more poetry 
online so i'm enjoying that as well so i'll probably um keep that going uh and yeah just to hopefully to continue to inspire you know other communities children adults um to become more active uh, and also to write publish books <laughs> yeah that's that's i think uh, one of the most uh, uh interesting thing when we we are doing not for ourselves but we are creating same kind of passion and learning for others as well by giving them same kind of tools uh, in terms of giving those learning those education which they are required for and i think in that sense uh, as you're teaching it's just not only you're teaching you are creating i believe in that way uh, so uh, thank you that's that's uh, such a wonderful thing i think you are uh, creating each moment someone's life uh, in a better way by uh, doing such great work so uh, selma we 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 see uh, your work we hear your work and uh, you are running your dance academy uh, what uh, way you would like to give the message to other our audience and uh, especially the women who are listening and watching us as well i think um one of my messages would be um i mean you know i'm a married woman i have children i run my house um i take care of a lot of other additional things but i'm still working i'm still running my business i'm still writing i'm still teaching i'm still quite heavily involved and invested in both aspects of my life and you know if anyone's um, if anyone's um feeling a bit apprehensive or they're a little bit shy thinking you know can i um have a family you know i've got a family can i manage that as well as doing my business well yes you can i think you know the determination and the power comes from within and then once it's come from within and you've taken that first initial step then your support mechanisms around you will lift you up and support you and i just think you know as women i think we can can we can do whatever we like as long as we are enthused and we are passionate and don't give up do not give up keep going keep plowing keep plowing you can do this <laughs> and uh before finishing i just would like to ask why do you think a platform like this women dialogue is important oh i think it's very very important dr shashi because you're not just connecting with uh, women in india but you're reaching wider audiences you're going to you know australia america you know the united kingdom i think that's brilliant i've never come across anyone who's done that before i must admit and you know what thank you dr shashi and i think it's very important you are connecting women from around the world it's like an international connection and i've seen some of the 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 other interviews absolutely brilliant i would not have necessarily been aware of those amazing women had we not connected and had i not been here today so it's vital very important thank you thank you to you as well for becoming this as i said in it starting becoming part of our uh, you know mission our journey and sharing your time your wisdom your learning your story with us and all our global audience uh to inspire and to motivate them so thank you selma for joining us thank you for having me it's been a pleasure and and thanks to all our viewers if you would like to hear more women voices and part of women dialogues please connect with us please share subscribe like and thank you see you in the next episode and if you would like to love uh, and fall in love with the bollywood dance i would share the selma's detail as well in the description so don't forget to check her details as well till then take care see you in the next time bye bye